2013 and 2014. Okay. So that's just to give you a little bit more context of, of social work within nursing midwifery um, and social work within the faculty. You're very welcome. Just pile in. So today's presentation, we're going to cover social work as a career. Um, we're going to talk about what's involved in studying social work at UQ. Um, what courses will you be studying? What skills and knowledge will you obtain? And what are your employment prospects? I know that's quite a lot to cover in, gosh, we only have 20, well, 25 minutes to 30 minutes, but just to give you a bit of a flavor around the profession and what it might be like studying at UQ. So firstly, I thought I would ask, um, certainly we'd look at social work as a career, and social workers just work, in, as you know, in so many different, different areas of practice, um, within mental health, within the community settings, within hospitals. Do you want to name a few more, Samantha, in the criminal justice system? Non-for-profit organizations, absolutely. Overseas, um, youth justice. So we work in so many different contexts. But we have something in common, and that's our value base and our motivation for doing social work. And this is very much around um, promoting human well-being, but really, I suppose it's our vision towards a much, a much fairer and more just society. And this is a really um, the underpinning kind of value base and motivation for social work practice. This is the International Federation of Social Workers definition. Um, and there are 122 members of the International um, Federation of Social Workers. So you could think of we're a global profession. Um, and we're constantly involving, responding to a whole range of social issues that are emerging in contemporary society. And one of them I was thinking was green social work. And that's gaining a little, we're getting more and more interested in environmental issues because we know that in fact um, disasters, whether man-made or natural, impact on most disadvantaged people more. So it really is an area we're working in. Also refugees and asylum seekers, people fleeing countries from because of war and... Um, and um, human rights issues. So, um, so social work is expanding into all these different different areas and new fronts of practice. Oh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the Bachelor of Social Work program, which is a four-year degree program in the School of, of Nursing, Midwifery, and Social Work. Um, you might have some questions about our postgraduate program. We actually have a, a two-year postgraduate um, degree. And you're very welcome if you want to stay behind afterwards. I can talk a little bit more about that, and I can point you in the right direction to find out more. But we're going to be focusing on the Bachelor of Social Work. Now, I'm sure you've come across this idea of graduate attributes, and I just wanted to say that um, UQ has six core graduate attributes around skills, qualities, theory, and knowledge. Um, and our courses are mapped against those key graduate attributes. So, for example, if one of the graduate attributes is effective communication, so we'll map that against a lot of our different courses. So, for example, social workers need to have good verbal communication skills um, in relation to teamwork, so they'll be doing presentations. Um, students will also be doing reports, perhaps practicing to write court reports or um, case notes, so written communication is really important, and also policy submissions. So social workers can actually work with individuals, groups, and communities, but we can also advocate for better housing. For, so we really have that strong advocacy role, which means we need to be able to write for different audiences. Um, another graduate attribute is ethical understanding. Of course, that's very key in social work. So we map a lot of our courses against that attribute. What are the others? I'm just thinking of um, core knowledge and skills, um, independence and creativity. So these are all attributes that, that UQ um, holds as core in, in um, tertiary, tertiary education. So this is what the course looks like. And I'm sure here you can come in. So the first year is your foundation year. And so you'll be drawing on psychology, so that's human development, sociology, trying to understand power and agency and a range of different concepts that are important for practice. You'll be doing social policy. Um, what else? Politics. 
political institutions as well in your first, first foundation year. And you do one course which is Introduction to Social Work. But as you can see, we, social work builds and draws on a range of different other kind of applied, applied areas. Samantha, do you want to comment on, at all on um, your first year? Samantha's in second year. So yeah, so I'm somewhere between my first and second year. Um, so I did a mid-year intake entry, um, which means my subjects are a bit of a mix at the moment. Um, so so far I have done a psychology subject, a policy subject, uh, politics, so Australian politics, um, a welfare, a welfare of Australian subject, and there was probably a couple more. But each of them really begin with introductory foundational knowledge, and then build that for both the individual uh, that you work with, yourself as a practitioner, and then the communities to which they belong. So the first and second, well, the subjects of the second year that I have done, um, are very core knowledge, and we'll, you will continue to build on those, not only in your <coughs> third and fourth year, but also as you practice as well. Yeah. And any sharing, any insights about what was helpful to you? or? I uh, think, for me, what was... Do, what do. Was, helpful <laughs> was um, I have so many people that come to me now and think that they need to know about these things before they start learning about these things. Um, and while that's good, like that's not a bad thing, it's okay if you don't. It's, I'm taking a psychology class this semester. I have very limited knowledge in that area, but that's okay because it is a foundation subject. So whenever you come to anything like this or you look at the course guide or you look at um, the subjects that you're going to do, don't get too scared if you've never heard of it before because that is completely fine, that's completely normal. The reason you're here is to actually learn about those anyway. Um, so if the biggest tip I could give anyone for their first or first year and a half is to just go with the flow, be prepared to learn, have an open mind, but don't worry if you've not had any experience because that is why you're coming to university. That's a really, really good point. Because <laughs> sometimes you look at the electronic course profile and the first thing you do is quickly look at the assessment. <gasps> what do I have to know? And then you go, panic. <laughs> you don't know that yet. <laughs> Hopefully you'll, be, you'll, you'll learn and eventually you'll be ready to, to do those assignments. Yeah, super point. Thank you. So the second year builds on the first year. So the second year is around building those practice skills. So we have direct practice one and direct practice two. And these are very much, direct practice one is working, um, interviewing, assessment skills, planning skills, where direct practice two is more working with groups and group dynamics and the phases of groups, dealing with conflict in groups, and then communities, thinking about how do we work with communities. And being very sensitive to, to cultural difference and cultural res responsive within communities. So it's really those really good skills that sit on the foundation um, courses. Third year is your first field placement. Um, so you're out there in the field and that is really learning out there in practice and making the links between um, your theory, your values, your knowledge and your experiences out in practice. You also in third year in the second semester you do a course called Moral and Ethical Foundations of Social Work. Um, you also do some foundational subjects in areas like mental health, disability, um, child, youth and family. Um, so you are getting a really good grounding in these different practice areas. Um, your fourth year um, is then your final placement and more advanced learning. So this is sort of mapped onto um, your, your earlier learning and there you do more advanced practice courses in child, youth and family, mental health, health and ageing. Um, do you want to say anything more about thinking about placement or? Yeah, one thing that I would say about placement is, so I, I know that I want to minor in mental health. I think I know that. I'm also very aware that in the next year and a half to two years that that could change. Um, so obviously UQ has a lot, like, a lot of different placement areas you can go to with partner with a lot of different organisations and a lot of different hospitals. Um, both here and rural, as far as I, yes. I know. Um, so with, especially when it comes to placement, I think it's good to have an idea. Even when you go into anything, it's good to have an idea of where you want to go, but I think the, the biggest asset you can have is to keep an open mind, because you might get a placement <coughs> in... For me, it's health and ageing is something that I don't think I want to do. 
but I'm also very aware that I could get a placement in that and um, completely change my opinion and my mind. So I'm very aware in the next couple of years to just try and keep an open mind, especially when it comes to where I'm going to go for placement, because that could completely give me a new experience that changes the entire course of my practice. Yeah, yeah. Gosh, excellent point. And, and we know students have. They've just um, did a placement in disability and said, that's where I want to work. Um, so it really is very, um, I suppose it's just really impactful on, on, on you because in social work, of course, your, your tool is yourself. So we, we're, we're kind of um, being self-aware and being critically reflective is so important around the work. Um, just wanted to mention the minors, which Samantha mentioned. Um, now, there's an opportunity to choose to do a minor in a particular area of practice. And these are the three different areas of practice. All it means is you will take eight units that are focused in that area. So you will have a foundation course, um, and you will have um, your basic sort of foundation. You'll have an opportunity possibly to do an elective linked in with that area, and also an advanced specialization. So you really will have those eight units, and it appears on your academic transcript. So I think one of the few universities that actually offers a minor in a particular area of practice. It's a generic course, so you're getting a broad-based social work um, education, but you'll come out with a minor. And I suppose it's helpful for industry to know that this is an area that you've done a little bit more work in or a little more of a focused um, work in. Um, the other thing is our Bachelor of Social Work Honours. So it's no extra year. It's all contained in the four years. But there's a slightly, um, the route will take you towards becoming more research orientated. That's particularly relevant if you think you're doing further, further study, um, maybe your, your MPhil or your PhD. So it really builds that that research knowledge base, all practitioners need to know about research because we're evaluating our work, and, but it just is that focused sort of pathway for research and further learning. But it's, it con it's contained within the four years. Um, so this is starting in 2017. There'll be this, this honours um, opportunity for students. Oh, this is where I put your slide in. <laughs> um. So I've got three questions there, and I just want to try to answer them quite briefly, because I am aware of our time here. But for me, questions one, so why did you decide to study social work? And questions two, and question two, um, are very intermingled. So I left high school and didn't know what I wanted to do, so I didn't come to further education straight out of high school. Um, I didn't know what I wanted to do, so I had a couple of gap years, and then I ended up working for the Salvation Army. So through my employment with them, I, have, I, I came across and worked with a lot of young people um, through generic programs, but also through programs that really focus on uh, youth who are at risk of homelessness and who were experiencing homelessness. Um, through my work with them also, I ended up doing a bunch of work with, um, in adult rehabilitation. So uh, people who are looking to seek support with addiction. Uh, mostly alcohol and other drugs, but also gambling and other things in there as well. And basically I've just done a whole bunch of work working with people um, to help overcome disadvantage. So when I was looking at my career and where I wanted to go, I, I have a, a couple of cert fours and different things, but I realised that to go much further and to really have a, a, a broader impact and a further impact that I would need to go back and study something else and something more. Um, I always said that I would never go back to uni unless it was to do my social work degree. Here I am. Um, and that background really helped me decide that I wanted to study social work. Um, why UQ? First of all, it's a beautiful campus. Like, and I know that is such a strange reason, but it's absolutely stunning. And something that was very important to me was not just the, the degree, like, not just the subjects I was doing, um, or the, the education that I would have, but also the life surrounding that. And um, two things stood out to me when I was looking, because obviously I did, I looked at you know, other providers and things like that. Um, the first one was that you can minor. So in my research, I didn't come across much other, so the fact that I could minor here in an issue and a topic that's so personal to me, which is mental health, um, moved it up pretty high on my list. And as well as all the extra opportunities that you have as a UQ student. So if you choose to, like you don't have to, you can just come and do your degree and that's absolutely wonderful. 
But if you are interested, there's so many other opportunities that you can join the sport team. There's all these extra leadership opportunities that I've found. Um, and a lot of social work students are often willing to do that because that's why you usually you're here, because you want to help people, you want to get involved. And so something that also really, we have like a young scholars and a young achievers program here at UQ. And as a student now, I can actually be involved in student mentor. And to be able to use my degree in mentoring other students at UQ is something that just really made it, like, I'm not stand out above the crowd for me. Um, and what's it like to study social work? I think it's an incredibly fun degree. Um, you learn a lot about yourself. The one thing that I didn't expect was how much I would learn about myself, how much I would change as a person, how much my, what I thought were core values will start to shift the more I learn and the more I become educated in so many different issues. Um, I wouldn't, and I have to be careful how I say this, but I wouldn't say that it is a hard degree in terms of content. I think it is a, it is a degree that if you show up, if you're passionate, if you want to learn, if you want to extend yourself above yourself and to help other people, that is a, obviously you've got to have subjects that you struggle with. I have plenty of those. But if you apply yourself, um, you will go on. You just, the yeah. subjects are just loaded to make you an, an incredible practitioner. So I, I think if there are people in the room that are worried that they, you know, that maybe you haven't studied in a number of years and you're worried that you can't do it or you're fresh out of high school and you don't know what to expect, I think from my experience in the degree is that they start you at the bottom and they take you through. And if when you apply yourself, you'll just go as far as, far as you want to go, you'll go, is what I'm going to say. So I think studying here is absolutely wonderful. Um, and out of all the different, you know, I've done a bunch of cert boards in community service and development. I've done a couple of other diploms in other areas of study. But out of all the ones that I've done, I've never been more happy and content with my life here at UQ. Wow. So wow. there's that. Take that. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Samantha, thank you. Um, gosh, that's so encouraging for anyone thinking about social work. Um, it really is. And I do think you really get into it, you know, if yeah. there's that passion and that, that drive. And, I mean, look at you standing up in front of a group of people talking passionately about, about social work. So those skills and, and the confidence will, will come um, in time through your, across your program. I think we're going to talk a bit about placements now. So, of course, this is the exciting and challenging part of the, of the program, um, when you're in a real-life work environment um, and a whole range of different contexts, when, of course, contexts shape how we work and how we practice as practitioners. Um, and valuable and rewarding aspect of your learning, um, it's around professional development, it's putting in practice what you've learnt um, at uni and um, learning new knowledge and skills. So it's certainly challenging. You have a field educator who works with you and supports you on, on placement. But you're out there, and I'll just give you a, a sense of how long. It's 500 hours. Um, so your first placement is in semester one of the third year, four days a week over 18 weeks. So the 18 weeks is good because it gives you some continuity and you can kind of build your learning and get a range of different experiences and get to know the agency you're working with and the context of your practice. Second placement is another 500 hours. So the Australian Association of Social Workers says you need 1,000 hours of, of placement in order to qualify as a social worker. Um, once again, four days per week for 18 weeks. So just to give you a sense of the types of placements, I know Samantha's mentioned a few of them. Um, you could be doing casework, group work, community development, policy, research. So you can just see the range of work that you, you could be doing in, on placement. Um, we try and ensure there's a balance between your first and second placement, if we can, that you're getting a range of different um, skills and exposure to different um, contexts. Could be rural, remote, or international. And we actually start this process very early on. Um, so six months before you go out there, we're starting to plan with you. 
come in for an interview, we make contact with agencies, so it's quite a long process just to make sure that this is going to work for, obviously, for UQ and for you as a student. Um, so we'll engage you in that process um, so that once you do go out, you feel well prepared for practice. This is just the website of the Field Education Unit and they're very open to any, if you want to make contact or have any questions about the placement aspect of the course, please do. Um, does anyone know where the Tiwi Islands are? You do. Yeah? Where are they? A bit further north. Yep, yep. Um, they're about 80 kilometers north of Darwin. So we've had students go there <laughs> and had really an amazing experience in the Tiwi Islands. Um, this is just some of the international placements. Um, anyone know where Kula is? Sorry, this isn't a quiz, but I just thought you might be <laughs> interested. Um, Kanataka in India, so in the south of India. Um, students have gone on placement. Um, also in Nepal. Um, and also in Thailand. This is in Chiang Mai on the border working with um, Garon people. Um, so you can just see some of the diverse opportunities for placement internationally. Oh, I've got a, a bit of a quiz now. We're going to just think about um, social work and career opportunities and employability. I just thought I would, um, might before I ask you these questions. Um, I suppose just a very encouraging sign, and I think Alice is going to hand out, where are you Alice? You're going to hand out some, oh, some circulating already around, um, so healthcare and social assistance are areas that are really developing at a very fast rate. Um, and in fact, it just some stats here from the Department of Employment saying over the past five years, this is where new jobs have been created. And of course, this is where social workers are employed within health and, and social assistance. So it's a really encouraging sign. So now we might go back to the quiz. Um, I just wondered if you'd have a look and just see, thought we might just go through each of these and see what you think. Are job prospects for social workers above average, average or poor? Just from your having a sense of out there, would you say, what are job prospects like at the moment? Does anyone want to say A, B or C? You're saying A. I think so. Samantha's saying yeah. A. <laughs> it all depends on the budget, right? Do you do budget? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Anyone else saying A? I've got quite a few A's. Okay, yes. Um, B, we have a B. B. Any C's? No. <laughs> okay. I got these figures from, and you can have a look, just job outlook. So they're very, a bit rough and ready, but certainly giving you a sense of, so A was the, the one that they, um, they said. What about two? Put your hand up if you think A, in terms of earnings. Any A's? Any B's? Got some B's. Um, C's? Oh, quite a few C's. And D's? Okay, um, B was the job outlook says B at the moment. I mean, these certainly change, but um, and what about C, employment growth of the next five years? A, very strong. B, yes, okay. Um, C, okay, um, very strong. Job outlook says very strong, very strong outlook for, for social work. I just thought this was interesting and have a look at the website. You can see how they calculate this, but it just gives, it's a really encouraging um, at the moment. Um, so I accessed it in July, <laughs> just to the 5th of July this year, and this does change. Last year it looked a bit different, didn't look as optimistic, but I think it's just good to, to just keep an eye on, on, um, on job prospects. So this is our con these are our contact details in the School of Nursing, Midwifery and Social Work. You're very welcome to make contact. Um, this is our, our website. And if you have any questions, we, we actually have a few minutes for questions. Um, I was asked just to mention the student strategy, um, which is something that UQ is building and has been building for a while. Um, and you can have a look on the website, the student strategy. But there are a couple of things that um, UQ is focusing on. Um, and um, 
I suppose working on becoming more student-centered, becoming more flexible, and there's this term, sticky campuses. They really want students to come and to come and enjoy the space, the teaching and learning space um, on campus. Um, so there are quite a few, few things that are, are being done, and this is, I suppose this is the more practical side of it. Um, building workplace skills, a um, little more flexibility, um, I suppose trying to build um, the expertise and inspire students, and then a, a new sporting facilities, and um, trying to generate this idea of a community of learners. So um, this is, yes? Oh, sorry, um, what ID do you need? Nine. Nine. Yes, yes. You're very welcome if you have any questions. I think that's pretty much it. So, are there any questions? Yes. You okay there? <laughs> Yeah, um, you can. I, I suppose just to say that social work is quite a structured degree program. You do get the opportunity to do an elective in um, second semester of first year, which gives you an opportunity to perhaps do criminology or maybe a language, or so you can do it from the BA course list. But generally, because we're an accredited program, we kind of have to stick to this sort, of, this sort of format. So it doesn't give a huge amount of flexibility. Um, there's another, I suppose with your foundation, if you're choosing to do a minor, you could pick another elective from another um, area of the BA or that links in with a particular area of practice. But generally, it's, it's not a dual degree. There's no capacity because we need to, at the end of this program, we, we need to say you've, you've, you've trained, you've done all the courses for social work. Um, in line with the accreditation requirements. So there's not a huge amount of flexibility, but you're very welcome to come and talk to us. Um, we did have a human services degree where you could do a dual degree, um, but um, that's not going to be offered anymore. So it, this is a more, a more structured program. Um, funnily enough, on the master's program, there are opportunity to draw in a few electives from, from um, other courses. Um, so that's certainly worth following up with if you're interested to get more information on the master's program. But great question, thank you. Yeah, I, I mean, unfortunately, and also with the studying abroad, it's kind of tricky sometimes because we have to find courses elsewhere that kind of match with our courses. So um, sometimes it takes a bit of a while. I know students have to plan way ahead to try and find a course that might fit with courses on our program um, because we have to, because of this accreditation, we have to say this is what you, you have um, for the degree. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. This one's more for Sam. Um, oh, good. With, yes. With your circles and stuff, how did you find, did you try to do any bridging with your circles? And was it at all that you tried? To get into UK? Um, in general? To more get academic credit, etc. I didn't try. Um, the reason for that being is I have a certificate for in community and services. So I felt that the subjects that I did, they were great for a cert for, but I wouldn't want to miss out on that one subject where I was maybe considering to do that, and that was a case that, um, the case one of the case studies or something that I had done. Bye-bye. I, yeah, I just Pleasure. thought that I'd be missing out. But having said that, do you have, like, a, do you have... I have several times. Okay. Um, I would, like, for me, that was my personal choice, but I would say that you would definitely want to get into it. I think you just go online to look at the RPL. Yes, and you can certainly apply for credit to the faculty um, and see whether, and what happens, they come through to us and we just see can we match the courses that you've already done with courses that we, that we have on the program. So it certainly is worth applying for credit. Yeah, I mean, it's wonderful if you're coming with, with that experience because it can only be beneficial, as, as Samantha said, so it's great. Any other questions before we finish? Yes. Um, I'm just wondering how much of the course actually concentrates on building personal resilience. And do, uh, because it's a great question. <laughs> it's a great question. Um, we thread it in 
through the four year of the program in, in different ways. Um, Samantha, I don't know if you want to comment on resilience because it's a very, um, we used to talk about sort of self-care, now we really talk about resilience and it is about that self-awareness and being critically reflective. Um, do you want to say anything about? I think, yeah, I think it's really important. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know how a social worker or anyone that works um, 